Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a special meeting of Commissioner's Court. Should be a brief meeting, but let's uh, at this time stand and we'll have a prayer and a Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for a beautiful new summer day. We just uh, welcome you here with us today. We just turn the meeting over to you and ask that you preside, guide, and direct us, grant us wisdom to make uh, the best decisions here. We're thankful for the opportunity to have funds to make some additional road improvements this year. Lord, we just pray for our servicemen, our service women. We pray for our county employees. We pray for the people of this county, Lord, that you continue to bless our economy and provide jobs for those that are in need. Thank you for each person that is in attendance today. And once again, we just uh, turn it all over to you. In Christ's name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome to our August 18th, 2014 special meeting of the Commissioner's Court. And uh, we're going to begin with item number one, public comments, requests for information on non-agenda items in accordance with section 551.042 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Anybody request to speak today? No? Nope. All right. Item number two. Here's our main item for the day is to open bids and possibly award a contract for application of seal code on County Road 2400. This is one of our uh, uh, energy transportation reinvestment zone projects in uh, Precinct 2. And on this one, we have chosen to uh, seek an outside contractor to help us with this work on the application of seal code. So at this time, I'll ask for bids and we'll start opening those. This one came Federal Express. Uh -huh. It was supposed to be here by 10. It got here at 10.38. But it was, I mean, Federal Express had it. It wasn't that the, the, the bidder was holding on. Is it a valid bid? I think so. I have hoped it. Yeah. The only question would be is whether have to throw it out what what day was it due on the on the last Friday? Friday. Okay. How have you all dealt with this in the past? I don't know that I've had one. Of those. I don't know that we've ever had one like it. I remember. Well, before we open it and get into that kind of controversy, let's make a decision on this as to whether we're going to uh, accept that. Again, it's in FedEx hands. I imagine it was sent to where it should arrive in time, priority overnight, which tells me it was scheduled to be earlier than that. I wouldn't think it would be the bidder's fault that it got here late in FedEx. I, I would think you'd still go ahead and do it. Priority overnight. Well, it does say on here, Friday, August 15th, 4.30 p.m., priority overnight, which tells me I'm not sure that they paid for an early morning service on that day. <clears throat> that would indicate to me to be the latter, uh, the latter time. So I'll ask you all for guidance. What would you like to do? That is from LS, LS Equipment Company in Henderson, Texas. Are you familiar with them? Uh, I think it's that group uh, that's associated with Longview, too. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to go ahead and open it, and then we can decide whether or not we're going to accept that bid, or do you want to make a decision now? Well, I think we need to make it. If we're, going, if we're not going to use it, we need to make it before we open it. Okay. All I don't right. know. I think Mike needs to make it. He wants to open it. <coughs> Well, it's my understanding, if it's not on time, if it's not here at 10 o'clock, then I don't think we can open it. I don't have a problem opening it because they didn't have it. They had it on its way here. But it, it was clear in the bid deal to be, to be in 
be here by 10 a.m. Uh, I agree. I think if we start allowing for uh, situations like this, we'll get ourselves in trouble. I would say I don't mind opening it up, but I don't know that we should consider it, and therefore I'm not sure we even need to open it up. Okay. Well, that leaves us with two valid bids. We've got Howard and Sons. We've got Northeast Texas Construction Limited out of New Boston. I'll start with Northeast Texas Construction. Specification for service treatment, TxDOT standard specifications for construction and maintenance of highways, streets, and bridges. Um, let's see. Here's our rate. CRS 2P shall be applied at the rate of 0.5 gallons per square yard. Grade 3 cover stone shall be applied at a rate of uh, one cubic yard for every square yard. Does that sound right? Price per gallon of oil, $4.15. Price per cubic yard of cover stone, $67.50. Total bid for the project, $143,166.63. Say that one more time. 143166.63. This is signed by David McDaniel. He says the road edges will be cut, soft spots fixed, and culverts replaced by Titus County. All right, any questions on that one? Second bid is from H.H. H. Howard and Sons. <coughs> All right, all these specifications remain the same. Their price per gallon of oil is at $3.75, and price per cubic yard of cover stone is $75 even. Their total bid for the project, 125400 even, 125400 and additional notes here, he states 44,587 square yards, assuming the job is 3.8 miles and 20 feet wide and sealed at the rates specified. Uh, and I don't know why he gives this additional information. 31,860 yards equals $89,605 total bid for 2.7 miles. So what is he saying there? Is he giving you what an alternative saying, bid? Checked it and it's 2.7 miles instead of the 3.8, but he bid 3.8, but that's what he was asked for. But it's really not that long. It's not that long. Okay. Now this uh, this first one didn't. You know we've got comparable bids here. That's right. Based on 3.8 miles, he's giving you a supplemental bid based on 2.7 miles. I went to Roger and talked to him, and this is what he said put in it. And he said if, if they're responsible for coming and checking it and looking at it and making sure the distance, uh, and, and they, I know both of these, I've talked to them about it. Uh, when the hired brothers got through with it, they bid it just like it was on here, but they also put down here, they told me they were going to write some word that that's what it would be. Uh, for 2.7 miles, but it, it comes back to this bit here. Okay. There are the quotes there. The well, again, the on your thing. on your price per gallon of oil, the first bid was at four dollars fifteen cents. The second bid at three dollars seventy five. So Howard had the cheaper on the per gallon of oil, but on the price of Coverstone, sixty seven dollars fifty cents was the first bid, and Howard's bid was seventy five dollars. So I don't know how that's quantified, but nonetheless, it resulted in a... You're looking at your total bid, this, the oil is your big expense. That's your biggest expense, okay. Well, again, comparing 3.8 miles on each of these two bids, we have 143,000 and 125,000. 
which will end up being somewhere less than 90,000 if you go with the um, Howard bid based on the actual 2.7 miles. Any questions? Anybody want to see any of this? You ready to make a decision? To me, the Hire Brothers have the cheaper quote because of the oil prices, and I make a motion that go with the Hire Brothers. Okay, motion by Commissioner Fields to accept the Howard Brothers bid. Second. Second by Commissioner Hinton. All in favor of accepting the Howard Brothers bid at 125400 Say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Item number three is consider and possibly approve UMR. And UMR is our, uh, this is all, of course, related to our health insurance. But we do this annually, consider and possibly approve UMR sending Medicare D letters to employees at $1.25 each. Do you remember how much they charged us last year? We didn't do it last year. What, what had Health First charged us in the past? Okay. Well, who has done it? So this is the first time we've asked for them to send those letters for us. We've normally done them, or what? See, last year, it's only second year with UMR, and we didn't do it, and they didn't do it last year. So they thought it was missed. Okay. Well, that's what I mean. Okay. How many, uh, what, what will be the total charge here? How many, how many letters do you anticipate would be mailed out? On top of that? Okay, so you said what was that, 158.75? Is that what you said? With their 100 minimum plus this per 125 each, about $268. Okay. All right. Any All right. Any questions on that? Ready for your motion when you are? Hundred dollars minimum. Hundred dollars uh, base, whether regardless of how many. Plus one twenty-five each. Hundred dollars starts at a hundred dollars, even wh whether they do if they do one letter, and then on top of that, a dollar twenty-five each. So, so you've got about one hundred and sixty-eight dollars worth at one hundred twenty-five dollars each, plus the one hundred dollar base layer. What is this exactly? That the uh, employees have to fill out a. Who's the best person to explain this? I'm not sure what a Medicare D letter letter is. And why do all employees receive that when it doesn't really affect all employees? safer to send it to everybody. So it'll be junk mail for half of the county. Well, I used to get these every year. Like to me, if we can get a stack of letters and put it in a paycheck. Oh, yeah. I'm going to find out if there's specific information. If it's just a stack of letters that say a Medicare D roll is coming up, if you want to enroll, let us know. 
did health, did health first used to take care of these for us? And, and you don't think they charged us? I thought they charged us. Well, I remember we've discussed this years ago, and I thought I remembered a more than a dollar twenty-five charge in the past. Okay. Well, I used to get these when I had my own Blue Cross policy. I mean, it was just junk mail every year. It's just a. I don't either. Well, why don't we, uh, how about if we approve, approve this expenditure if it's a unique letter to each employee and if it's not that we obtain a copy of the, of the form letter and we include it with payroll. How do you give it out to people that have direct deposit? Just with their stub? Okay, by next Monday. Okay. All right. Motion by Commissioner second. Fields to table this, second by Commissioner Hinton. And if you'll let me know, I'll go ahead and we'll put this on the agenda for Monday night. Okay, all in favor of tabling this, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, last item is consider and possibly approve travel and seminars. We have a couple here that we needed to get squeezed in in, in the deadline. Some more employees have decided to attend the Net Data Regional Users Group meeting. So I have this first request comes from Diane Abston and she, uh, Deborah Abston, I'm sorry. Uh, everyone in the district clerk's office would like to attend this, and this will be 820, is it 822? Okay, yours says 825, but it's really, it really, uh, all of you are going on the 20th. Okay. So that'll be this Wednesday, and again, this is the uh, seminar that Net Data provides every year for all of their clients. This will be in Sulphur Springs just on that one day. It's an 8.30 to 5 event. They're all going to be traveling in uh, one vehicle from Deborah Abston's office. She's got uh, oh, about $43 worth of mileage plus meals. So what would be the meal policy on just a day trip to Sulphur Springs? Just to provide us with a, a meal ticket for lunch? Okay. Okay. But it'd be for one meal, is that right? All right, so let's assume if, if a meal is not provided for you, then we'll approve uh, one meal at actual cost. So that's the first request from Deborah Abston's office. And then uh, County Clerk Diane Norris asks to send Kendra, Jennifer, Paula, Joyce, and Diane to the same event on that same day. Uh, roughly the same uh, mileage, $42.67, plus a meal if necessary. And those are the two that I'd like your uh, decision on. Make a motion to approve travel seminar. Motion by Commissioner Hinton. Second. Second by Commissioner Fields. All those in favor of approval of these two travel and seminar requests to attend the Net Data event say aye. Aye. Opposed? And there are none. All right, is there anything else that we need to discuss today? Were you pleased with that bid? Uh, after I found out uh, the distance of it, yes. Okay. 
if it had been the 3.8, what, what were you hoping for? I was hoping around 100,000. All right. If there's nothing else to discuss, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Hinton and a second by Commissioner Fields. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. All right. Thank you for attending, everyone. <laughs>